Matt, Chaos Pixie, we're back for another episode uh, of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. How is everybody doing tonight? Doing good. I'm uh, doing pretty good. Hard day of training. Hard day of training. Yeah. Thought thought I was going to uh, pass out and puke, Oof. and not and and maybe in that order. You know? That's a heavy workout. Um, <laughs> and it's been very, you know, it's like there's the the positivity and the, you know, the excitement and the uh, and the drive and the will of training again and wanting to, but I tell you what, this is not easy at all. This is very, very painful considering my injuries. Right. But I have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a plus. It's a, like a uh, I can't hear you. Too now. You're muted. There you are. You you just cut in and out. I did. Did I? Now, really? now I can hear you. Now I can hear you just fine. So Pixie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. Anything interesting happened this week that's out of the normal? No, not really. Like I said, last week I had a bunch of uh, resin come in and I've been playing around. They have a big tax sale that happens at the end of April, uh, two towns over. And if you don't know what a tax sale is, that's a horse person sale. Just so you know. Well, we don't sell ourselves. Well, yeah, you don't sell horse people. You sell horse <laughs> things at do a place for have. horse people. Yes. Well, um, uh, I have no comment because it would, uh, from what that sounded like initially, uh, might get us kicked off YouTube. So, uh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's either horse people, like, Equestrian. Yes, equestrian. They call them equestrian. When you, when you say the word horse people, it also instills an image in my mind of like a fawn or a centaur. I'm. Is that like one of those uh, people with like uh, their lower half of their bodies is like a horse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's a centaur. Because that's what I was thinking. Horse. And I was thinking there's some kind of backdoor slavery going on with these people. You know, the horse, <laughs> horse people sale. They can clean your house, or you know. <laughs> but okay, you fight your fight your battles. Sale. There's a t there's a tax sale a couple times over. So I'm going through and I'm making a bunch of sample pieces using tail hair that I already have, um, with horseshoes and stuff like that. So I'm getting a bunch of of stuff that I can lay out with business cards at the tax sale. Nice. Now tail hair that can be a, lo a couple different things, but Ooh. I think you're I think you're referring to the tail hair of a horse. Yes. Yes. That is, that is indeed what is the look on her face right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> holy cow. Um, all right. Well, everything's been all right with me, too. Uh, we're still dealing with the same stressful stuff uh, here at the house. Um, but things are going all right at the moment. You know, the, the dog is still with us for now. Uh, we're not quite sure you know, how long we have with him, but we're spoiling the crap out of him and treating him like a king, so he's happy, and so are we. Um, been building a little bit lately, and sitting down in the man shed and just thinking, thinking about, like... Thinking, thinking, thinking. I've been thinking a lot yeah. about my past, actually. I've been thinking about, like, where I came from and how things have changed over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just myself as a, a, a man, like, changing inside, but changing outside of ourselves as well. Like, our environment changes. Uh, was a few months ago, we drove by my old house that I grew up in, and I expected to see my old house. But in, in its place was the same building, but it was entirely different. Um, and then... What was it? My, my high school. My high school used to have only like two floors on the wings and then one floor in the main halls. And mm -hmm. uh, now, I swear to God, it looks like it's a damn college. Things five stories tall. You need a key card to get in now. It, it's crazy, man, how things change around you and you just don't... You wish it wouldn't, you know? Like, I wish it would go back to the way it was and I could go visit my old home again, but... 
you know, there's been a lot of thinking down there in, in regards to accepting the way life works, you know? Yeah, I know. I, I do. I'm always reflecting on, you know, because I've had, I have quite a lot of life experience, the things, the places I've been, you know, especially being on the road wrestling and, right. uh, um, but in, even more in particular, uh, uh, working in bars, I worked in bars, nightclubs, strip clubs. I worked, you know, for 20 years, that was what I did, uh, you know, in between, uh, wrestling. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I mean by that is like, you know, usually wrestling would take place on the weekends. So I'd have to do something to make, to, you know, supplement my income. Cause you weren't, you weren't making a living. You're on the indie scene, unless you're a big big name you're not making uh peanuts uh yeah you're not making uh you know a fortune uh you know you're getting you're going to shows and you're uh getting paid anywhere from as little as five dollars to a hundred dollars depending on who you're working for right you know now i i stopped after a while doing those five dollar shows because in the beginning it's like i just want to wrestle i just want to get in the ring i just want to learn then over time, you're like, you know what? I'm only going to do that if I'm getting paid. Right. So um, and it also allowed me, there were some shows that I did for for a small, for, for little little to no money, but that was also because I was getting connected through the promoter of that show to uh, Hollywood right. and getting stunt work and extra work. And that's where I made, you know, I'm one year I made $80,000 working in work between, in, between wrestling and Hollywood. You know, which is for extra work. That's that's good money. Nice. You know, know, and then I've never actually been in a position to be an extra before. Well, I mean, I live in California. True. So True. there's fair point. There are tons of you know, there are so many extras out here. I mean, there are a lot of working actors, mm -hmm. people who make, you know, you know, high five figures or low six figures and they're working weekly. They're constantly working. And it's really sad what the pandemic has done to a lot of those people. Yeah. Because, you know, things are much, much different now. Yeah. Um, they're not using as many extras. The ones they are using are the ones with uh, a lot of experience that, that they know. So, uh, and, and plus, you know, with how things, much things cost here in California, uh, a lot of the work has switched to uh, uh, in Canada. Really? You know, they're they're filming a lot more in Canada because it's cheaper. But right now, if you go out to Canada to work, you're stuck there. You ain't coming home. Netflix does it. You got to go. Out, you got to go out there, work, quarantine for two weeks, and then and stay put. Because if you go home, you got to do it all over again. Yep. Go home, quarantine for two weeks, and when you come back, got to quarantine for another two weeks. And it's just a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. So a lot of people are stuck uh, either in Canada. Um, there, I mean, of course, they're still filming out here, but uh, Florida is another place uh, where a lot of people that they live in different parts of the country, but because they're filming every week, they just stay, yeah. they, you know, they just stay where they're, you know, maybe one day a week, but they're, they're just staying there because they don't want to have to deal with the quarantine factor. And I don't blame them, to be honest with you. No, I mean, that you think about it the way you just explained it that's like one full that's not like that is that's one full month of quarantining if you total it all up that's a, a month that you're doing yeah nothing you know yeah just sitting there watching television yeah absolutely and that's that's not conducive to a lifestyle but before we uh get into our subject here uh or i think we got a couple subjects yeah um do. what are you vaping on brother I, <clears throat> I'm vaping on the usual stuff. We've got the Beast from the East, uh, the 4S Lipo DNA 250C, uh, coated by Ashton Palmer over at Palmer's Powders, guys. Uh, on top of that, we've got the Steam Crave Aromamizer Titan RDTA sitting pretty. Uh, with you know, I think I'm going to build rebuild mine just so we can have, you know, when we're doing this show together, we both have <laughs> Titan Brothers. Titan Brothers, you know, uh, because I tell, because right now mine sits <laughs> next to Th next sits next to Thanos, oh, in yeah. uh, on my uh, on my little display shelf of my Marvel statues, because I thought that's a that's a that's a vape for Thanos. Oh hell yeah! 
Hell yeah, the Titan. Um, what else am I vaping? Inside of that, we've got some DIY homebrew strawberry cheesecake stuff sent to me by my boy, Mr. Tom. <coughs> Thank you very much, brother. I much appreciate it. This stuff is really, really good. Uh, next up, we've got the stacked copper dreamer with the stainless steel ardent on top. And in that, we've got some more homebrew DIY stuff from my man, Mr. Tom. This one is a strawberry jam monster clone. He calls it strawberry toasty jam. And it's better. It's mm. better than Jam Monster. Um, and I loved Jam Monster. That was my first juice I ever tried. Uh, and I've been a fan of it ever since. But once I opened this bottle and I knuckle tested it, I knew that I was going to love it. And uh, then I started vaping it. And it, yeah, I honestly, I feel like it's a better flavor than your original Jam Monster. Um but that's I've, what I've never got. been a fan of Jam Monster. Never been a fan. No, of no. I've tried. I've tried a number of Jam Monsters, and I think the closest that I liked was the uh, peanut butter and strawberry jelly. Oh yeah, the, I think the, that was the closest one I liked. Yep, I, I know that one too. That one was pretty good. I um, think that juice, that particular Jam Monster juice, tasted like the um, what is it? The Uncrustables. Those kids oh, the strawberry Uncrustables. That, yeah, that you could pop yeah. in the toaster oven. Yeah. Mm, that actually makes some sense. <clears throat> I can see that. But it kind of tasted like that if you took it out like 30 seconds too early. Like 30 <laughs> seconds before it hit the toasty. Yeah, yeah. It's got like that slight toast flavor, but it's not like actual toast. It's like half toast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, we've got... The Jab 4, uh, you guys can see that. Jab 4 set up here. This is the Jab 4 mod with the Jab 4 RDA from Immortal Mods. Uh, and in that, we're also rocking the strawberry cheesecake. Uh, I like it that much. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Chaos Pixie. Let us know. I love that you said that they can't see the mod. And then you hold it up to the camera and point to it like they can see it. Piece I by was holding. Piece. It I can up see before. it. Yeah. I can see it though. Matt I can see, see it. it. So she, he, so he I was, was doing Matt. it for my benefit. Yeah. It's still, it's still a little bit funny to watch from this side of the screen. <laughs> um, I'm running my usual combo. I've got the Dreamer with the mini Asgard, and I've got a DIY fruits and cream on it tonight. Nice. Which has been steeping for probably a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Should be pretty good then. Cream it's needs a little, a few weeks to steep, anyways. Freaking delicious. Ooh. Um. So I guess that's gonna roll it from us to you, Matt. What are you vaping on, sir? Um. Well, uh, still some of the stuff from last week. Um. Uh, Reload twenty six on top of the uh, Odin Mini, uh, Majestic Mango Hogut Yogurts uh, on the inside. Uh, that is an amazing mango. Uh, type 2 RD, RTA um, on top of the uh, Squid Industries double barrel. I got some uh, mixed berry lemonade also from Hogwarts Yogurts. Uh, I think that's all, most of my e-liquids right now. Nice. Um, well, actually, no, no, no. I got uh, the uh, Turk V2 on top of the Clutch with some of Uncle Chris's vanilla custard. Uh, his... his he, he really knows what he's doing. Uh, and I hope he, uh, you know, he launched his website. Uh, I really hope, uh, hope and wish him a lot of success with it. Um, I also, uh, got my little, uh, smock Nord pod because it's got six milligram rocket blast on the inside. And oh, oddly right. enough, speaking of smock, uh, I was going through my, uh, liquid drawer and I found a bottle of uh, Citrus City Cherry Limeade. Okay. And uh, I was like, you know what? I want to vape this again. I haven't vaped it in a while. But I had nothing set up. Nothing yeah. set up. And I just, you know, I'd actually uh, cleaned a bunch of uh, tanks and stuff. And, I, and so I look over at my vape cabinet. And I have this uh, glass vape cabinet. Some of you see in a vape shop. Okay. It has the majority of my mods. All right. And then it has uh, 
some of the kits that uh, uh, most of the mods don't have anything on top of them. That's the 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 tanks and R RDAs and stuff are in another drawer. But stuff that's like a kit that came in a kit, I have kept together inside the case. And I was just looking over and I noticed the uh, smock morph uh, kit. And I was like, you know what? Why not? And uh, I put... Uh, <coughs> oh, bless me. Oh. Sorry. Explosion. Yeah. And... Uh, we'll cut that out. I only say bless you if you burp. Because um, everyone else says it when you sneeze. So I want to be different. Um, so, yeah, I filled that up with this. And uh, I've actually been enjoying it. I mean, it's obviously the flavor is nothing compared to an RDA or an RTA. And, you know, this is a smock product after all. But you know what? It works. And it's stuff that I have coils for. And you never know what's going to happen down the pipeline. Uh, I may be relying on some of these old uh, sub ohm tanks that I have co coils for stored away, you know, packed away in a drawer in the future. You know, it, could, it just all depends on what goes on with, uh, you know, vaping, with the vape mail ban, with the flavor bans, PMTA, all that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. It does. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm vaping on. Uh, I ran out of... Uh, 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 Mitch Hogart's uh, uh, This Blows oh, the yeah. uh, Blue Raz yeah that, that bottle's gone. gone I yeah. vape the I vape that thing constantly and it is gone now My and favorite. I've already been in touch with Mitch about uh, getting a resupply nice um, and that will happen soon hell yeah so yeah that's what I'm vaping on um, with that what are we talking about today brother well we're gonna do a several topic uh podcast today and um the first thing i want to talk about is i want to do some music stuff because that that's something i've been heavily into lately is uh just listening to music just anything i do i've got music playing in the background right now and uh that ranges you know the style ranges but right now i've been on this massive metal kick <coughs> to Stuff that I've heard before, I'm trying to get into new music as well. Um, started listening to uh, an album that was recommended by Grim Green from Guar. Um, America Must Be Destroyed, I believe, is the name of the album. Uh, but thanks to his suggestion, I started listening to them. Um, and I, I've been listening to a lot of like older stuff too, but new... Not newer for, like, the newer generation. It's newer for me, but it's, like, Lamb of God, Ashes of the Wake, and Sacrament. They're not new albums. They've been out for a while now. Um, so, for me, I say new in, like, my generation. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's different. But, uh, yeah, I, I've been kind of in, engulfed with music lately. Um so everything I do, I, I could be doing something or I could be doing nothing. I could be sitting down in, in the man cave and just chilling on the couch, listening to some tunes. Um, what about you, Matt? Uh, how does, how do you? Music's, music's been a very uh, big part of my life. Mm. Um, as far, as long as I can remember uh, since I first, very first uh, um, album I ever got was, uh, the first run DMC album mm. back in the eighties. And through that, they did the cover of dream of, uh, not dream on, uh, walk this way. Right. With, and then the video with Aerosmith that introduced me to Aerosmith. Aerosmith is one of is in my top 10 favorite bands of all time. Uh, I've seen them in concert a number of times. Nice. You know, in fact, Steven Tyler is one of two singers that started in the seventies that still sounds, you know, just as powerful as he does, as he did back in the seventies. Yep. It's um, black magic. He sold his soul for a little eight ball of Coke and a joint. Yeah. And then he traded that. <laughs> he, then he was sober for a while yep. and then he traded it for Lunesta and, uh, uh, Viagra. and, uh, and, and, and Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which he snorts instead of, uh, because that's what he does. <laughs> Um, oh man, is that why his nose is so big and long? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but 
and that opened the door, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're close in age, uh, Chris. So, yeah, you know, we grew up in the Mm eighties. We listened to all that music that came out in the eighties, you know, and I listened to a variety of stuff from, uh, you know, uh, the hair metal, Mm -hmm. you know, which I, I don't even really like that term hair metal because it was, that was the style. It wasn't the style of music. It was the gimmicks that they were doing right you know the 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 glam the you know it was basically it was basically what we now call classic rock yeah you know the bands that are still around because they were musicians they were talented uh you know Def Leppard Motley Crue Poison Skid Row um Skid Row well Skid Row's you know Sebastian Bach still around the original right. band's still around but they got a new singer but when you listen to the radio if they're playing Skid Row, they're playing those first two albums with Sebastian Bach. They're not yeah. playing any of the, you know, yep. um, of the stuff with the new singers they've had in the band. Um, and I've, you know, quite frankly, I kind of understand where Sebastian Bach was coming from, why he left the band and why. I mean, they, they fucked him out of a lot of money. Oof. And yeah. uh, and if he when they I mean, when Skid Row was on the cover of Rolling Stone, it wasn't Skid Row, it was Sebastian Bach. In those videos, they were focusing on Sebastian Bach. His voice was what the power behind that. Mm. No disrespect to the other band, the band members. They're all great musicians. But when you think of Skid Row, you think of Sebastian Bach. Right. And it's very, very rare in music for a singer to depart the band and for the band to survive. Right. You know, and that leads me to like my all time favorite artist, uh, another guy that sounds exactly even even more powerful as he did as he, today than he than he did starting in the 70s and that would be sammy hagar mm. sammy hagar was one of the guys when he you know i grew up with van halen with sammy hagar right you know and i've, I've gotten a lot of shit for this over the years you know everybody likes dave everybody i go dave was an excellent performer watch him now listen to him now he can't sing he can't move uh You know, it's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. Right. You know, and because he wasn't a musician and he took terrible care of himself, drugs, alcohol, (coughs) you know, um, too much partying. Whereas, uh, you know, I followed Sammy from when he started in, you know, right before he started in Van Halen, all through Van Halen to his solo career, to uh, his uh, to Chicken Foot, the super group to his current band, The Circle, which has, um, you know, Michael Anthony, who, you know, the Van Halen bass player has, has been with him throughout the whole thing. And uh, um, Jason Bonham, John Bonham's son, is the drummer in The Circle. And he oh, is shit. absolutely an amazing, you know, drummer. Nice. You know, and that's the thing, like, you know, there's a big argument going on right now of who, you know, because drummers don't always get a lot of attention. You know, it's usually focused on the singer and the guitar player. But who do you think is the greatest drummer of all time? Hmm. It's going to be, a, there's going to be a disagreement here. I can already tell you that. Uh, now, you got to of... think, you got to think of who can play any style. Who's such an amazing musician? You know, yeah, there's some, <laughs> some drummers like in death metal and speed metal, you know, and all that that they could just they could just go and yeah. go and oh, go yeah. and go. But, they know but could one they speed. play? They only know one huh? speed. But they only want one speed. Right. You know. They only know one speed. But there is there is a drummer that I have in my head that can. He, he's very. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's. Uh, he can he can diverse yes he's very diverse uh he can adapt to other styles as well uh and that from dream theater mr mike portnoy oh no question mike portnoy is one of the great absolutely mike portnoy is in a band called the winery dogs okay um and the winery dog is mike portnoy uh billy sheehan who's known as the Jimi hendrix of bass yeah and uh Oh, what's the singer's name? Uh, I always forget his name. Uh, uh, Richie Kotzen. Okay. Who was uh, 
the guitar player in Poison when Poison threw out C.C. DeVille for a short time. Ooh. I think he wound up. I think he wound up having an affair with uh, Ricky Rocket's uh, uh, fiance. Oh no! <laughs> and that's why they kicked him out of the band. Oh man! But he was also in Mr. Big with uh, 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 Billy Sheehan, and uh, he he plays the guitar and he sings, and that is at, that is in my top five of one of the, my favorite all-time bands because they are just amazing. And just recently, uh, Richie Kotzen released a record with Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden. Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy cow. I um, We f- were fortunate enough to catch just a glimpse of what Mike Portnoy can do live. Uh, it, we didn't see Dream Theater, but... This was a year we went to, uh, I believe it was a Mayhem Fest. Yep. It was Mayhem Fest. Mayhem Fest. Uh, no, it was the Corn uh, Rob Zombie show. It was the Corn and Rob Zombie show that we went to. And um, there was a special appearance made by Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, if you don't know, the year that this show took place was the year that Jimmy the Rev Sullivan, their proper drummer, had passed away. Mike Portnoy stepped in to finish the tour with them. And he's done that for a number of bands. In fact, uh, he did it for uh, Twisted Sister when mm-hmm. A.J. Perro passed away. Well, he did um, it out of uh, respect and honor for Jimmy because mm-hmm. that was his tutor. That was his mentor. That was his idol. That was his drummer god was Mike Portnoy. So, um, Yeah, I watched uh, Mike, Mike Portnoy um, at a... At a, at a uh, winery dog concert at the anaheim house of blues do his drum solo and at one point he pulls out a hello kitty drum kit this little kid's hello kitty drum kit and he just goes to town on it there's a video on youtube of him doing that yeah and, and the pokemon oh my god too and the pokemon guitar or, uh drum yeah set too. good drum set yes and he yeah absolutely uh <laughs> the the two that that always get the 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 most mentioned is uh, John Bonham, Mm -hmm. although in why I think he was an amazing drummer, no question about it. I don't think he was alive long enough to show what he could have really done over the years. You know, you know, he did die early. Mm -hmm. He was like 32, wasn't he? Yeah, he he died. uh, He he froze to death. He passed out drunk in his car and he froze to death, Mm. Um, which is what Ozzy Osbourne wrote the song Suicide Solution about. Right. Um, but, uh, the other one who did have longevity that I would say is probably number one is Neil Peart okay. from, uh, Rush, but, uh, definitely good. Definitely good. you know, uh, but if someone were to tell me, I think Mike Pornoy is the greatest drum of all, I, I wouldn't argue with that. No, he is absolutely an amazing musician. My second, and he's a great, up. he's a, he's a great guy too. Is he? I haven't had the pleasure of meeting um i i've never met him like i'm saying i'm just saying i've watched so many interviews with him because i followed the winery dogs right right. and i've watched so much stuff with him he just seems uh, maybe it's all a gimmick maybe he's a fucking asshole i don't know (laughs) well my second from what i said and from what i've heard other people talk to him talk about him that he's just an amazing guy my second uh runner up for for drummer of the year as it were uh would have to be and people might disagree with me about this one too. I think he's pretty versatile. That was the word I was looking for. Versatile. Versatile. Uh, I think he's pretty versatile as well. And that is Vinnie Paul. Oh yeah. Vinnie Paul. Uh, I, I wouldn't put him, I wouldn't put him as like in the top 10, No. but uh, maybe the top 20. Okay. Um, you know, uh, because, but he also, he did have, he was versatile, but he did kind of stay in that, Right. You know, harder. When he was with edge. Pantera, yes. But then he came Yeah, down. but Pantera and uh yeah, he came down a little for uh what was his band? Uh Hell yeah or Damage Plan. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He yeah, did. I I enjoyed they Hell do yeah. A little bit of a little more country stylish. They do a little yeah. bit of funk in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and I think that he's he can uh, you know, adapt to different styles uh that's how i feel about his, his playing style you know it's really interesting about music because i get asked sometimes uh well who's who who are your who are your top five if you had to pick five bands that you, you have to listen to 
uh, like if you're on a desert island and it's five bands, mm-hmm. which which albums would you bring with you? Which music would you bring with you? Ooh, um, see, the, my my taste goes all over the place at all different times. So does mine. Um, so does mine. But I, <laughs> I you know, because there's there's ones that I want to say that are newer albums from newer bands. But mm-hmm. then there's a lot of like the older stuff that I want to say as well. Um, mm-hmm. Bark, uh, not Bark at the Moon. Um, Blizzard of Oz, first of all. Um, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be an album. Let's just talk about the oh, artist. Okay. You could have so, Ozzy, variety. Ozzy. So yeah. Ozzy, yeah. After Black Sabbath. I consider it all together. Ozzy oh, and Black Sabbath. Yeah, I consider it all one. Okay. Um, because, uh, you know, uh, when you go to an Ozzy concert, he plays Sabbath songs. He mm-hmm. plays, he doesn't just play his solo stuff. He plays, you're going to hear Iron Man and Paranoid, you know, you know, sometimes you'll hear something really oh. out of left field, like Snow Blind, you know, he'll play Children of the Grave, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. He plays those songs in concert. Hmm. It was years ago, but the one time I got to see Ozzy perform, I was so disappointed because the shape the, he was in, it was shortly before he kind of, not retired, but stepped away for a while to handle his health. Um, he started with one song, and then the next thing you know, he's in the middle of a completely different chorus from a completely different song from a completely different time period. And the band was, like, struggling to catch up and keep up with him. (laughs) And change songs. All while he's mumbling through the mic. And it just, it was miserable. It was sad to see somebody that I was so excited to see. uh, I understand exactly where you're coming from because (laughs) Ozzy was, like, growing up as a kid, Ozzy was one of my Mm all-time favorites. Mm. And I followed everything Ozzy did. In fact, in my bedroom, I had this, you could call it a shrine if you want to, but it was, like, it was just on the wall it was there was an X with uh, with uh, mass with uh, um, duct tape, and it had just you know Ozzy Ozzy Ozzy, and then there was a number one in the middle of it, and then there were four different frames. I still have those frames of fo- of like a, a an eight by ten that I got out of like Kid Parader or Metal Edge. Oh yep. You know, and I I had that right there, and uh, rang. Um, you know, there was Ozzy you know was Ozzy stuff all over the place. I used to write letters to Ozzy fan club i was part of ozzy osbourne's fan club and i used to write letters to him you know because that's what you do when you're a 12 year old metalhead (laughs) um and uh well that's just it i kind of see him the way you do he was he was he was a music titan in his day well even people little known about ozzy is he doesn't know how to play any musical instruments really no he does not know how to play he knows how to sing and he knows how to write lyrics that's it Dang. But he was just you know, one of those people that I got so excited to see him in person, and then to watch him nosedive like that, and then Evanescence, exactly. um, Evanescence played right after that, and again the performance tanked. I mean, you listen to to the music, Could and they are just quality. like, no, <laughs> no, no. People, the lead singer is stumbling over the stage. And being winded <laughs> is not the sound equipment. Matt needs to power bomb the trainers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, like I said, I have my classic rock uh, um, guys. Uh, so you're you're saying, uh, you know, it's you're diverse. So you're talking about Ozzy. Yep. Um, Lamb who of else? God. Who else? Lamb of God. Lamb of God would be another one. Um, um, you know, top five. Who are your yeah. five b- bands that you'd want to be able to listen to if you're stuck on a desert island? Top five. All right. So yeah, uh, Lamb of God, Metallica, Slayer, Veil. Have you ever heard of them? What about In Flames? Of course. <laughs> they were going to be next. But the caveat to all of this is that I would have to, to have every album that those No, that's created. not that's not what I'm asking you. 
I'm not asking you to pick an album. That's an oh, even no. tougher. Uh, I'm just saying, just like, saying I'd have name to have the bands. All of the albums. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Absolutely. I, I feel the same way about about a lot of uh, about you know what's in my top five. You okay. know, for me, number one is always going to be Sammy Hagar. Yeah, and that includes Van Halen and Montrose, and the Chicken Foot and the Circle. You know, um, hell, I'll even throw that album he did with uh, uh, who's the the guitar player from uh, Journey. Uh, um, I can't think of his name. Yeah, they did an album together. Uh, I'd even throw that in there. Anything that Sammy's done, I would want. Um, okay. uh, number two, and this is more modern. This is more of a more mod, uh, a modern band that's been around. It's been around a while, but they, 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 they've been around this century. They were popular this century. Okay. In fact, the first time I, I, I heard them live, I didn't even know who they were. And they opened up for uh, in 04 for the uh, Van Halen reunion with Sammy Hagar. Okay. Um, and then that's Shine Down. Yeah. Shine Down is an amazing band, mm -hmm. and they get shit on sometimes because they use uh, that they're using tracks because you get that with a lot of bands these days that they're they're playing to tracks. Mm -hmm. And I've been there and for many concerts, there there's things that get piped in, like they have a song called "Cut the Cord." Yep. Um, and it's got a uh, an orchestra of children going freedom na 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 mm -hmm. na. And yeah, they pipe that in. That is it. They pipe certain things in, but as far as there's no lip syncing going on, there's no playing to tracks. You know, there's just certain things that get piped in, um, which band all bands do that. You, if you have one song that has an organ on it, you're not going to bring an organ player and pay an organ player to come with you to pipe to play the organ on one song throughout the entire tour. That's that's ridiculous. Just pipe it in. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, some do. Some some bands like uh, Bon Jovi, for example, they have uh, a you know, and it's not Bon Jovi anymore. It's just John Bon Jovi because Richie's not in the band anymore, and without those two together, I just can't listen to it. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, they have like uh, all like a, a, a band of side musicians that plays with them. Right. You know, a lot of bands do that. Um, Ozzy actually had a a, a vocal uh, backup. Um, where they had somebody that would help fill in if Ozzy got winded or he stumbled or something. They had a guy behind the curtain with a microphone that sounded like Ozzy. Hmm. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, then That's from. Cheating. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm just telling you that, you know. That's cheating. <laughs> hey, but you yeah. want to talk cheating, look at Kiss. Kiss. And I, I was a huge Kiss fan. And even when, you know, the band, you know, and I grew up in the 80s when it was the Unmasked era with, uh, and it wasn't the original members. It was Paul Jean, Bruce Kulik, and Eric Carr. And, you know, and then they reunited with Ace and uh, um, Peter. Yeah. And, but where I finally, like, got enough where I thought Kiss went too far it was one thing, and I even had a bit of a disagreement with it, but it was one thing for them to dress up uh, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer in the Catman and the um, Space Ace outfits, right. you know. But when they started having Tommy Thayer play uh, um, Shock Me and doing all the, 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 the guitar effects that Ace would do, that's where I was just like, that's enough. Okay. Wow. That's Ace's gimmick right there. So you're, you're <laughs> just basically ripping off Ace. In fact, Ace played on a Kiss cruise ship as one of the uh, as one of the opening bands, and he did Shock Me. And then when Kiss came out, they had Tommy sing Shock Me. So I'm just like, that is just you know. And now Paul can't sing anymore. He's lip syncing. They're playing the tracks. You know, it's just you know. They're, and I guarantee you, once Gene and Paul retire, they're going to put two other guys in their gimmicks. And just keep Kiss going as a, uh, you know, cover a tribute band. Right, right. You know, but uh, from there, okay, so Sammy, Shinedown, um, Aerosmith. I mentioned Aerosmith before. Aerosmith would have to be on that list. Yep. Um, Iron Maiden. I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan. I've listened to Iron Maiden since, since I started listening to music. Iron Maiden. And... 
Ace yeah. is High and Flight of Icarus are probably my two favorite songs. Oh yeah, that's that's on the uh, what the uh, uh, was it Power Slave or is it, I think uh, it's Power Slave? No, what, what was the album before that? Um, not on Countdown, right? No, you know what? It is. It is. It's Power Slave. It's Power Slave because I remember the live after death concert that took place at the Long Beach Arena. They opened up with Aces High, oh, nice. um, and they all and it was basically that tour was the power the Power Slave tour. So it is Power Slave. The two bands um, have like absolutely nothing really in common, but two bands that I kind of put together is with one is Iron Maiden. The one that I listened to at the same time that I was listening to Iron Maiden, that's probably why I put the two together, it's Megadeth. I like Megadeth, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I was, you know, I, I, I still listen to Megadeth when it comes on, on mm -hmm. uh, usually on Ozzy's Boneyard on uh, Sirius XM. Right. Um, but, you know, if you're asking me to choose between Megadeth and Metallica. Metallica, hands down. I'm going to choose Metallica. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> It depends on what album, though, because it, it, well, that's the thing. Is, when it was like, Dave yeah, Mustaine I know because with Me with Metallica, then I'm okay with it. After Metallica, I'd have to take Megadeth. You know, what no. I mean? What do you say, say that again? If it was Metallica with Dave Mustaine, then I would listen to it. But if it was the after that period of Metallica, <laughs> I would have to take Megadeth because yeah, Dave but Metallica Mustaine. never released an album with Dave. Kirk Hammett joined the band uh, before Kill 'Em All was released. Well, then I guess I'm taking Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> I know most people have the argument of before it's it's up to Injustice for All, mm. and then they were done. The Black Album came out, and I am a huge fan of the Black Album. I am a huge fan of uh, Load and Reload. When Saint Anger came out, that's where I was like, <laughs> "What the hell is right this into the crap?" Bin. Throw it in a meat grinder. For Fun yeah, fact, that's where I was like, this. they just jumped the shark. I yep. discovered Metallica by accident. I, up until that point in my life, had had a cassette player and all of my mom's old cassettes. So I was listening to, like, Jeff Foxworthy. I was listening to Red Sawvine. My grandparents bought me a CD player. And I didn't have any CDs, and I hadn't even taken it out of the box yet. And we went all the way up to Colebrook, New Hampshire, which is about 20 minutes south of the Canada border. And at this little shop at the bottom of the mountain where our camp was, my mom went to go get ice for the ice chest. And they had one of those little round circular things with all the CDs sticking out of it. And I flipped through, and the black album was the first thing that caught my eye. And I pulled it out, and my mom's like, do you want to get it? And I was like, sure. And I had never heard of Metallica before. I mean, I was a teenager. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that once. And the first time I listened to it, I set it down for probably three or four hours. I went out to play. And then I spent the entirety of the rest of my weekend with a book in my hand listening to that same album over and over and over again until the batteries died in that CD player. Hmm. Battery was a good song. <laughs> oh, yeah. no i went to uh when metallica released the black album they started touring without an opening act and they would play for three and a half hours Jeez. and i went to the uh the the la forum to in 1992 to see metallica and they played everything they probably only played like five songs on the black album and they but they played all of kill them all they played all of Cre of uh ride the lightning they played all. They played most of Injustice for All. Um, yeah, buddy. See, that's my you know, favorite album. Master even of Puppets. Even, a, even above Black Album. Like Black Album's great. Most Metallica albums are great, minus like you said, Saint Anger. Uh, that yeah. was a definite bomb. Uh, but when it comes to Metallica, pretty much, I pretty much stick to their older stuff. But even some of their newer stuff is all right. Um, but it, even more than the Black Album, and Justice for All has always been my favorite. Oh, yeah. My and favorite. Justice for All was an amazing album. Yeah. It's also their angriest album because they were dealing with Cliff Burton's death. Mm. And so, you know, uh, you talk to, uh, um, who is the bass player? Uh, 
that replaced that that took over when uh uh oh the Cliff new Burton dude? died not the guy now the guy that was in on the black album and the load albums and um, um Jason i can't think of his name Newstead? jason newstead yes um you talk to him and he was just he got ribbed to death being the new you know in fact it sometimes he said james hetfield was a bully yeah um because of just they were just and they were the height of their alcoholism they were no, uh, known on the road as alcoholica because uh they Ooh, drank drink. jägermeister by the bottle by the hour Ooh. so <laughs> holy cow um but I think you're never going to guess who my number five is. No, probably not. Taylor Swift. And this, no, not Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, but uh, and no, not 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 any of these girl bands, not any of the boy bands. Spice Girls. But <laughs> I'll tell you a joke. I'll tell you a story about uh, me and the Spice Girls a little bit. But uh, <laughs> no, it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh matchbox 20 good, good i band. love matchbox 20 good band now when they started in the 90s they were kind of a more of a teeny uh, teen band and more of a uh a pop band but if you watch them now in concert now they are at a what did you just do <laughs> That was the alarm on his phone that says the naughty C word that Pixie doesn't like. And before it came over the microphone, I had to mute it. That would have been horrible. Well. <laughs> you guys would have heard him getting beat on camera. You're very welcome to everybody out there in, in Spotify and YouTube land for me muting that so you don't have to hear that vulgarity come out of my phone. Uh, you don't understand. I think our listeners want to hear that vulgarity come out of your phone. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so, that, that's one of those um, double-edged sword things. It's a flip of the coin. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, you watch their North concert. It's, uh, it's uh, out on you know DVD or you can get it on, you know, download it off Amazon or whatever. Um, that is an amazing music. They're amazing musicians now. You know, they're not just... Uh, they still release albums. They still make new music, and they've progressed and grown over the years. And uh, in fact, their their so some of their older songs, Push. you know, songs like th like Push and uh, 3 A.M. Yeah. and uh, Wrong uh, Long Day, yep. which is one of my favorites. Um, they 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 just they become they're no longer these songs that you would hear like you'd think oh that's a pop song. Now it's a it, it's still within the same style, but it's there's much it's much more harm. Uh, what what harmness is that the word I'm looking for? Harmonious? Um, yeah, I, I harmonious. Like, har harmonious, harmonious. Um, <laughs> there's much there's you know there's more. Uh, it's more diverse instead of just sounding like a pop like right. pop music. Right, they've there's got other so, sounds uh, to them now. <clears throat> and I'm a big fan of uh, like Rob Thomas. When Rob Thomas did that song with Carlos Santana, "Smooth," yep. on that's an amazing song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I, you get an endorsement from a guy like Carlos Santana, you know somebody's a good musician. When I first picked up the guitar, that was the one song that I started listen, uh, started learning to play right after "Crazy Train" by Ozzy. "Smooth." Yep. Yeah, I I, I really enjoy that song. Mm -hmm. Um. See, I like a lot so yeah, of the that's 90s my, music that's my top everything. five, and it, it is diverse. It, it is, is di a diverse amount of music. You can't you get, get much uh, more diverse than that. I, I mean, well, actually. Well, yeah, I could I could be like you could be like yeah, I listen to Slayer <laughs> and I listen to Taylor Swift. I listen to. <laughs> He's motioning towards me. Yes, hey, Pixie. <laughs> what would your five be? What What would your top five artists if you were stranded on an island and you can only bring five artists? music with you what artist would you be it's choosing it's really hard for me to do that because i legitimately listen to everything except opera and gospel i listen to instrumental i listen to Poker. percussion i listen to pop i listen to a little bit of rap a lot of country but mostly so, polka no <laughs> polka. The only polka i listen polka. to is weird al yeah right um 
And picking it down to five was even harder. Because when you listen to so many different types of music, finding something to take all of those types into one consideration is rough. So if I had to go top five, it would be Savage Garden. They have an Always Will Be, my number one. Uh, Garth Brooks, because he has such a range in his country music, and he has so many damn albums that, I mean, you could probably listen to him for three or four days straight just listening album to album end to end. Mm -hmm. um, Dropkick Murphys, <clears throat> because Always everyone cool. needs that little splash of punk. Um, Meatloaf. Just, I, Meatloaf. I, you can't. Hey, I would do um, anything for love, but I wouldn't do that. Yeah, put yeah, him right. in the top I five. Would. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would do all the things. Um, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. And baby. my fifth one is a, it's a big toss-up. Because there are four different genres that I want to to cover if I have to do something like that, but if pressed into it, probably Blink-182. Okay. Because they're obnoxious, and I love it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I like Blink-182. Yeah. You mentioned Dropkick Murphys. I just wanted to make a quick announcement to you guys, as well as everybody else out there listening to this podcast. March 17th, this St. Patrick's Day, uh, if you don't know about the Dropkick Murphys, they do a free benefit, not a benefit show. They do a free show in Boston at Faneuil Hall or at Government Center. I'm sorry, uh, every year. Now, the past two years, obviously, we've been kind of held back from that due to COVID and quarantining and whatnot and lockdowns. Um, so, what they did last year and what they're doing again this year is they are doing the same concert, but they are doing it virtually. Everyone will be able to view this concert 100% free. They do accept don donations to help take care of the crew and the band, but it's not necessary. It is 100% free. So if you guys aren't doing anything, that is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. if you are on the Central Co or the, the Pacific Coast here in the United States. Uh, I believe that's 11 p.m. Yes, it is. It's 11 p.m. in the U.K., uh, and you guys can find them on their website, uh, Dropkick Murphys. So that's a, a really cool, cool thing that I'm looking cool. forward to. And it's not, it won't be as good as going and seeing them in Boston in person. However, still if really you've cool. never seen them perform, I can guarantee you they are not going to let people down. Mm -mm. They're one of those bands that throws 250% of their energy into each and every performance that they do. You know, uh, when I, you know, when I listen to music in the car, mm -hmm. like a lot of us do, um, but when I'm at home and I want to listen to music, I put a concert on. Yeah, but I want to see a live performance, mm -hmm. you know, and what's I'm interesting now is it's just because of the, the way things are now. If I if there was a concert I wanted to go see, and I wasn't able to go see it for whatever reason, it's on YouTube the next day. Somebody was there filming, and filmed the whole thing and put and put the whole thing on YouTube the next fair day. Fair play, fair play. I mean, assuming you know. that um, things don't, assuming things kind of lighten up a little bit in the COVID area, uh, assuming that we are going to be making more progress in um, treatment and prevention of you know COVID-19 assuming things keep going the progressive route uh you know maybe we might see concerts later on this year I know that there's one that's been scheduled already and is planned for July 20th one that uh, I'm really hoping to go to yes I will be playing it safe I will be social distancing and wearing my mask it's not until July anyways but uh that is things that I will be doing uh, but that show is going to be really fun. We were talking about Megadeth earlier, and they're going to be there. It's going to be Lamb of God, Megadeth, Trivium, and In Flames. And I'm really, really excited. Um, I'm really hoping they don't cancel. But if they do, I'm hoping they do it virtually instead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine they still will if the concert can't go on. Hmm. Um, I am really amazed that a lot of more bands haven't taken advantage of this technology. Of course, it's expensive, too. So, yeah. 
well, I imagine the record companies aren't going to want to fit the bill. But if you watch, uh, you know, and this is a pro wrestling tie-in, if you watch uh, WWE right now, they have something called Thunderdome. Okay. And it's basically, there's monitors all around the arena. Each chair has monitors. I mean, it's not the entire, every chair, but it's, you know, because of the size of the monitors and everything, where fans can log in, they pay their fee, and they can watch the show live from their home and have a little bit of fan participation as far as uh, cheering and, you know, I mean. Oh, that's cool. With, with, yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is I do know they have uh, they have people there that uh, talk to the fans beforehand say, okay, you boo this guy, you cheer this guy, you – they're trying to work it all. And when it doesn't go their way, they cut the crowd uh, noise and they just pipe in their own shit. Oh, but which is which sucks, but uh, why not why not uh, picking a picking a, a venue, uh, and it could be a small venue too. It could be the you know, House of Blues. It could be, yeah. you know, any one of these small little venues, or you could do a stadium. You could do a stadium. You could do an arena, um, and set something like that up, and then you could perform and uh, weekly, and fans can buy tickets and log in and watch this live you know and cheer and yeah i'm just i'm amazed like i'm amazed that uh the the sports uh football and and baseball and basketball and hockey and all this they have cardboard cutouts of people (laughs) in the stands i mean why not take advantage of this you know it's not a technology that i mean obviously they can't call it thunderdome because wwe's got the trademark on that right which I'm assuming they bought it from George Miller. If you think uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, but right. Um, wait, when am I? Is, no, not George. George Miller is it? George Miller? I can't remember. Maybe that. Maybe that's the case. Um, uh, he for also hockey, did. You could uh, just call it the penalty box. <laughs> what's that? I said for hockey, you could just call it the penalty box. Yeah, you call it the penalty box. Uh, there's all kinds of different things. Uh, and why I was thinking George Miller, I'm thinking of who the um who the uh, the creator of Mad Max. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, but he also did the movie Babe. That was also one of his oh, movies, Pig which is kind of weird. Just the the, the yeah. Um oh, shit. uh god, that's going to bug me now. Um Oh, excuse me. For some me. reason I'm thinking George Miller's the guy who who uh did Pumping Iron. George Miller and Byron Pumping Kennedy Iron. made Mad Max. George George Mill it, it's George Miller and Byron <laughs> Kennedy, yes. But George Miller was really the uh, the brains behind the whole thing. Right. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I don't understand why more people aren't doing that, especially sports teams, because they got the money to do it. Right. Um, but, okay, it is what it is. Um, but I do think there's going to be more. Concerts aren't going back. I still have tickets. You know, it was postponed last September – and uh, it's supposed to happen again. It's supposed to happen this September. Whether or not I'm going to be able to go is, or if they're even going to still do it. But it was the the uh, uh, Motley Crue reunion. Okay. Uh, with uh, Poison, Def Leppard, Joan Jett. Oh no shit. Yeah. Dude, that's I mean, a good show. Yeah. And say people can say whatever they want about bands from that era. Uh, they're still around. They're still performing. You know, name some of these bands from the 90s. You know, some of these, uh, you know, there's something very few said. of them. There is something to be said about all these older bands. I yeah. Mean, you you got to think. Everything evolves. Everything changes. If it wasn't for where we came from, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't have the music that we know today. No, not at all. You know? And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I think, uh, people need to realize that and I've, I've had this argument with Metallica fans, right? Musicians evolve. They're not, if you want to hear kill them all and, and master of puppets and just listen to that yeah. fine, but don't get pissed off at the band because they're musicians and they want to make new new music. They want to create new sounds. Right. They want to write different lyrics. And you guys also understand when when Kill 'Em All and 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 uh, um, Ride the Lightning were, were came out, Metallica was a very young band. Uh, 
you know, they didn't have they didn't have wives, they didn't have kids, mm. uh, they didn't have this diversity in their life. They were very angry because of their upbringing, and but that that only lasts for so long. Eventually, you're going to want to write about different things, your life experience, things that you've been through. You're going to write, you know, different types of music, different lyrics. And that's fine. If you don't like it, then don't listen to it. But don't shit all over the band because they're they're going they're going in different directions. Right. I mean, it'd be one thing if Metallica all of a sudden decided that they wanted to be a, a polka group. I mean, that I would, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, absolutely. but uh, no, they're still an amazing band. Yeah, they've had a few blunders. You know, Saint Anger was more like uh, Saint uh, Ridiculous, but uh, there's nothing anger about that album. No, <laughs> there's nothing... no, definitely not. More like fluffy bunnies and unicorns, and it's like yeah. And then you also have to remember they had just gotten uh, honored uh, by uh, MTV, like announced them as icons, and they had like uh, uh, a bunch of different newer artists uh, on there performing Metallica songs. You had Avril Lavigne doing Fuel. (laughs) You're Avril Lavigne doing Fuel, and the next thing you know. Saint Anger comes out, so you're like, eh. but yeah. <laughs> it's like, where are you going right now? Wait, what is it? What's the next dumb move you're gonna make? You know, it... I don't know, but I get ups- I, I I think this has really just become something of a uh, a uh, cultural. Not, I don't even want to say cultural, but it's just kind of the thing in in the music world to shit all over Nickelback. Yeah, it is. That has been a thing, even many, when Nickelback was popular. <laughs> yeah, but th- that that made them more popular. Yeah, it did. Okay, but guess what? Uh, Dimebag Daryl has played on some uh, Nickelback songs. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jerry Cantrell <laughs> is a huge Nickelback fan and has been has played live with them before. He, and it's... his argument, he's got the best argument. He goes, "People shit on Nickelback." He's like, "Well, have you ever been to a Nickelback concert?" No, why would I do that? You should go listen to them play live. Amazing it's, bunch of musicians. It's super funny because Nickelback is one of those things that like <clears throat> it makes me think of high schoolers and how somebody will say that this particular jacket's not cool and everyone else will say it's not cool and when yeah, a walks bunch of fence in wearing climbers. the fringe jacket, they pick on them hardcore. But like seventy percent of the kids picking on fringe jacket kid all have a fringe jacket sitting at home that they wear to like family reunions and shit where they don't see their friends. That and yeah, I had, who, I had to do that with a, 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 a knockoff members only jacket when I was a kid. <laughs> <clears throat> so when oh. like people shit on Nickelback, I just kind of smile in the back of my mind and I'm like, yep. You probably there's listen to much, them in the There's shower, a lot more bands out there to shit on. All right? yeah, there's a lot like, more. I try not to shit on any music because, like I said, I, I just all music. I enjoy music in general as an art form. Um, yeah. You know, and so for me, it. That well, I'll shit thing, all. Like, I'll shit all over mumble rap all day long. But do you? Um, do you think? Because I, I have this thought where, um, music has only within the past i want to say 10 to 15 years really started to get um i don't want to say emotional because emotion has been in music for a very very long oh time. yeah um dream on by awareness bringing awareness lyrics bringing awareness to certain topics certain things um specifically mental health um depression things like that uh, yeah, because that's a new, we understand a lot more of it now. We understand exactly. more that's, about mental health. That's part of that changing flow. Well, not where... just about like educating, but like showing people what they go through. Mm-hmm. You know, but and you got to remember, a lot of these artists yeah. are the, these newer artists <clears throat> are uh, dealing with their own mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Some of them are bipolar. Some of them have anxiety disorder. Some of them deal with depression. Right. Um, so they they write it. You write what you feel. You write what your experiences are. Right. Um, yeah. A good like musician the... could just look somewhere and go, "Hey, uh, a blue car uh, next to a, a big rock. Let me write a song about it." You know, mm-hmm. they could do that. But like... you don't, what is that going to accomplish? They want to write what they're feeling, what their passion is, right. 
what they've experienced. Mm -hmm. And a big one for me lately that I've seen that from uh, has been I Prevail. Uh, they've got two albums that I I listen to quite often now. Daily? Yeah, daily. Uh, one is called Lifelines. The other one is called Trauma. And mm -hmm. he, Brian, the lead singer from I Prevail, he deals with bipolar depression as well as a, a few other mental health issues. But his depression is what really, really, really gets him. And so he makes a lot of songs about it. One of them is called Breaking Down. Um, you know, it's talking about how when you have depression, you get stuck in your head and you just keep thinking and thinking and thinking. And it just keeps bringing you down and down and down. And you just get to that breaking point. But, you know, what are you supposed to do? And uh, for me... <coughs> I mean, like I said, emotion's always been in music. And for me, I've always been able to relate to songs, but it's become easier through the years because they do it a little bit more blatantly and obviously, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one for me. Well, I've heard, I've heard things like that in, in music for, you know, as long as I can remember as far as, you know, uh, mental <laughs> health issues. Or it was more around addiction, yeah. You know, and, and mental health that, that caused addiction. Mr. Crowley. You know, uh, Mr. Crowley. <laughs> Won't you ride my white horse? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm depressed, so I worship Satan. Yeah. Matt, um. <laughs> Matt, Matt pretty much hit the nail on the head with the door to that kind of music and that depth has been opened up because we know more now. The research and the studies have started to be put in more heavily. And I, I love the old people that go, well, we didn't have such a thing as ADHD in my day. Bitch, no. I'm going to stop you right there. You absolutely had ADHD in your day. It went undiagnosed because nobody knew what the hell the, to call it. Nobody understood that it was a broad subject mm -hmm. that people could be put under. And y'all just had to develop unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with it. You're just mm -hmm. mad because we have a label. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing I will say about that, about that subject, is though I do think it gets overdiagnosed. I think some people, you know, same thing with people, you know, oh, I have a short attention span. I have No, you're bored. Yeah. Okay? If it's a subject that you love, you will stay into that. You will not... Uh, you will stay on topic, you will stay on target, but if it's like they're dealing with, with the kids in school, they say, well, yo, do you think that he has ADHD? No, I think he's bored. He hates this subject. It doesn't interest him at all. It doesn't mean he has ADHD. He's bored. It's stupid exactly. to him. Mm -hmm. And that's why with but, our daughter, they were saying, they were asking about ADHD testing when she was in second grade. Bitch, mm -hmm. she is seven. She is bored. She does not want to be yeah. here. She does not want to learn your numbers and your words. She <laughs> wants to be home playing with freaking Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. And uh, I just hate that parents are just automatically, it can never just be the kid is lazy or, or the kid is bored or the kid just doesn't want to do it. It has to be some kind of mental illness all of a sudden. It all has to be some kind of problem. Or, it's or like, a problem with the parents. Well, that's 99% of the time what it is. Well, yeah. It's a problem with the environment the kids are in. And, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a pro it, we it's a problem with that. the parents, and but sometimes it's the, the parents only have so much control, you know, especially considering things like the internet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you could put all the child safety crap you want on your computer. They're going to find a way. It's no different than when we were kids. And my father told me, I catch you smoking cigarettes. I'll beat your I'll beat you to I'll beat your head in. Okay, you know, you and I, what did I do? I stole a pack of his cigarettes, went in the bushes, smoked my brains out. <laughs> yep. No, nope. and it's yeah. funny because our daughter was diagnosed, but at the age they wanted her to go in and be looked at, it didn't make any sense because you can't get conducive Results. evidence from a seven year old. It doesn't work that way. You've got to let them at least be able to express themselves. And it's not to mention can't. a seven year old's not going to be as honest. Right. Right. So we waited, we waited till she was, I want to say 12 or 13. It was only in the last year or two when she could express herself. 
Mm -hmm. And she could talk to the doctor and be honest with him about what helps and what doesn't. What she feels and what she doesn't. Right. And she was diagnosed and she was put on medication. And it is a night and day change in her schoolwork. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't about to do that to a seven-year-old. Right. It just wasn't I think worth there's it. A, there is an age that is too early to be tested, I believe. And I think, you know, nine, ten, okay. But six, seven, I think that's still a little early to tell. The kids, to an extent, mm-hmm. need to be able to advocate for themselves. Because as parents, no, you can see changes, but you don't know how they're actually feeling about them. So you may put your kid on meds and see they calm down. <laughs> And see they settle. But in their head, the war could still be raging and it just slows their body down. And that's going to cause more damage than it's going to do any actual help. Mm-hmm. If they can't And I talk- think kids are way over-medicated. They're just everything. Here, let's put them on this. Let's put them on that. <clears throat> I was put on Ritalin when I was a kid. Last and year. then they later discovered what Ritalin does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Uh, last year, I made a big stink about this on one of my live streams. Uh, I believe it was last year, it was 2018 or 2019, I can't remember exactly when, Uh, but the FDA had um, deemed, you know, cigarette, or e-liquid as a nicotine product and vaping is is tobacco product. Tobacco product, yeah. So, uh, but roughly around the same time, they also approved gummy candy amphetamines for children with ADHD. <laughs> the FDA actually approved amphetamine candies for children. Yeah, gummy amphetamines. That, that's what... Gummy amphetamines. Yeah, gummy candy amphetamines for children. It, we're going to kill vaping, which is a safer alternative to smoking traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. Or snuff. Or snus. Or a whole plethora but, of or, or Lucy, Lucy, uh, oh, yeah, or Lucy, Lucy or Lucy, uh, Lucy gum. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead and approve candy amphetamines for children. Uh, if they're young yeah, that, have a gummy, they should if that change. doesn't scream, big pharma runs everything. I don't know what does. Um, but that, that's, uh, that have you ever seen, astounded. you've seen dogma, right? You've seen dogma. Yep. Remember the scene where uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon go to the uh, the, the movie uh, corporate Movies. office? Yeah, and uh, they they kill almost everyone in there. Yes. Uh, now I'm not advocating uh, murder. I'm not advocating murder by any stretch of the imagination. No one. We don't do that here. You? No, absolutely not. However, <laughs> that being said. I would love to go to the, that the, that corporate office and go to that executive table of the people in Big Pharma and power bomb every single one of them, mm. uh, because they are just they do not care about the world, they do not care about people, they, they care about only money. care about money and living like absurd jerks uh, for the rest of their lives. Right. Um. But yeah, like we totally got off music topic there, but that's all right. Well, that leads us that's to... okay. That's okay. That's what we do here. And uh, we do have some other subjects that yeah, we, we, we do. Discuss, got, uh, wanted to discuss. We got some other stuff we could talk about. Uh, I did want to bring up as a, like a, just a different kind of line of thinking and just a little bit of fun here. What, you know, let's, let's discuss a little bit about what we like to do, the three of us, uh, in our, our downtime or rather... Not necessarily downtime, but the time we have for ourselves when we're not, you know, handling responsibilities or when we're winding our day down. What is it you guys like to enjoy in your time off, quote unquote, uh, of your days? Uh, animals. 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 I am a big animal lover. You know, I have five cats in this house, mm-hmm. uh, which I call my cat pack. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I would, my dream would be to open up an animal sanctuary, uh, to where animals, you know, could, uh, come and live and, uh, enjoy their lives. Animals that have been, that have been abandoned, beaten, 
yep. mistreated and give them a good home. I would love to have a huge plantation yeah. of, uh, you know, and there's a, uh, you know, there's a big house uh, that's uh, got a lot of indoor animals. And then there's a huge uh, facility. Um, now, obviously, if I had the money, I would put this together, but I'd hire the right people to run it. I couldn't run it by myself. Right. You, you know, and there are people that have done that. There are people that have done that have put things like that together. And, uh, you know, of course, my other dream, if you ever see the movie Raising Arizona with uh, Randall Tex Cobb as the bounty hunter, <laughs> I would love to just put that gimmick on and ride around the country on a Harley and powerbomb everyone who's ever been mean to an animal. <laughs> you know, abused an animal, tortured an animal. Excuse me, but you that's... Uh, spot owner? Uh, yeah, why? What did he do this time? Slam! <laughs> <laughs> it's not what he did, it's what you did, and I'm taking spot with me. Yeah, right? Oh, man. Don't worry, Matt. I will drive the big rig with all the animal living quarters in it, and I will just follow you on your motorcycle, and I will make sure that I have a little step that after you power bomb them, I could set it down and we could, we, we could wipe your forehead and we can get a <laughs> memorial picture. We can take the animals and we can go to the next stop. We'll, yeah. we'll, and then we leave, the corner. And then we leave and they're laying out in the middle of the street where their house is on fire. Um, right. I didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I was the, sitting watching uh, him the whole and the, time. The trailer's going to have a little pop out wrestling ring. It's just going to jut out to the side. <laughs> We'll have a little stool, and we'll have the medic there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love I love animals. Uh, obviously, vaping has become a hobby. We're yeah. hobbyist vapors, mm -hmm. so that is a big part of our lives. Yes, I mean, there's times that I, you know, I really. This also has to do with mental health. You know, when my mind is starting to get manic, there are times that I have used building. You know, you know, building rewicking. Uh, trying different flavors, uh, you know, different addies and stuff. I have used that to calm my mind, you know, right. and it's a it's a great hobby. Um, but uh, and then you know I'm training right now. I'm training again. And uh, once upon a time, bodybuilding was my hobby. You know, right. and I hope that I'm able to recover enough that I can I could start doing that again. Start lifting heavy again, start training heavy again, and uh, not only just be in have a, a be in shape, but get you know really back into some really sick shape. Right. You really want to be looking, you know, like your yeah. Old I old do. Old. I want to look yoked. Yeah. I want. I want to look. You know. I want to be swole. You know. I want. <laughs> I want that swole. back. I, I look at old pictures of myself and look. I I never had a six pack abs. Had maybe a three or four pack, but I never had a six pack. No, um, I never went down the road of bodybuilding that hard. Um, but I enjoyed the, the the different diet styles. You know, I especially enjoyed the cheat days that you would have. Right. Because then you would eat like a just an just like a, an amazing amount of food. You know, I've often thought like, okay, when this keto, th I mean, keto is not going to be forever. Keto may last a year. I'm going to get the weight off me. Um, Depending on what happens with my back, if I if it's able to heal without surgery, um, and I'm able to you know get better again and you know have a really good quality of life again, get back into uh, strength training, get back into bodybuilding, I would also like to uh, uh, take on some food challenges. Ooh. I've seen these. I've been watching these videos of people that go to these different restaurants. And uh, they, 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 it's like, okay, if you can eat this, you eat for free. You get a T-shirt. Some people, sometimes they have prize money. Get your name up on the wall on a plaque. I think somewhere in the future, that's going to be something I might want to do. Yeah. <laughs> now, th there's some things. I, there's some things I've seen that I'm like, there's no way in hell I would do that. But uh, you know, uh, a pizza challenge, a steak yeah. challenge. Steak. I, I could that's get down with that. That's where it's at. <laughs> steak, man. I'd be down for steak challenge. See, uh, I certainly am not going to do a, uh, a, a, uh, a a seven uh, uh, ghost pepper wing challenge. You know? Oh, <laughs> Oof. no, I, I would. I'd be down for a steak challenge. Uh, I used to do landscaping for work, and uh, I generally didn't stop for lunch or anything. 
So one uh-huh. day I ended up putting in like a what, like 16, 18 hour day. Yeah, you were like and, a 16 hour day. Yeah, and I, I came home and I hadn't had anything to eat. And uh, we didn't really have anything in the fridge that, that really struck me. So I made, I made the wife drive me over to the market and I uh, picked up this three pound steak. No. I didn't make any. Yeah, it was a three pound steak. I know before. that. You told me you were hungry and you wanted steak, and oh, I yeah. came back from Market Basket with a three pound steak for you to pound straight you know to your face. You know how many years this was. Either way, I <laughs> I swallowed, inhaled this steak within twenty twenty five minutes. I think it was just glorious. But I would love to. Do you a remember steak. the the movie The Great Outdoors with John I Candy? Don't. We did the old ninety sixer. He had a ninety six ounce steak. Oh, and uh, <laughs> oh. but I tell you what, I could do that when it comes to steak. Yeah, it's cooked properly. Oh yeah, and oh my god, I could eat steak all day. Yep. And, you know, right now I'm not. Right now I couldn't do it because I'm doing this keto thing. You know, I'm limited. Even though keto is like I could eat all the steak I want, but uh, you know I don't have the stomach capacity for that right now. <laughs> you have to. I've I've watched these guys. It, look, there's a there's a uh, there's a girl that's uh, um, oh what's her name? It's like uh, Kitana does kilos. I think it is, I think her YouTube channel is called. Because hmm. um, she measures everything in kilos because just for the hell of it. Just for, she's an American. She just does part of the gimmick. <laughs> and uh, she, I swear, she must be five two and weighs you know 120 pounds, 130 pounds, right. little tiny thing. And she, I just watched her just steak, pizza, tacos, you know, just, oh my God. I'm just like, where in the hell does that little thing put all these, uh, that food? You know, you kind of get it when big, huge guys walk in there and, you know, they got the stomach capacity. But I'm just like, holy shit. Boy, when you're seeing so I'm, I'm very fascinated by things like that. And, uh, Let's, have you ever watched so, an eating competition? Yeah. Well, Some I watch, uh, yeah. Fit, like, Fit, fit. Well, you have to be. <laughs> I do think the the hot dog challenges where you're you're shoving the wa- the bread into water, that's cheating. I think that's cheating. I think uh, you I should have gross. to eat the bread. Mm. No <laughs> hot dog bread. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we only know one guy who's uh, famous for hot dog bread now. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> so. What about you, uh, Pixie? What are some things that you like to do for fun when you're not handling responsibilities? Not- well, working with animals is a thing. I mean, we've... I, I literally... We have less pets in our house right now than I've ever had in my home. And I mean, we've had iguanas, snakes, rats, guinea pigs, rabbits, mice, dogs, cats, ferrets... Um, we had a flying squirrel at one point in time. Like, we've always just had animals. So their behavior has always interested me. I've always been curious about, you know, trick training and things like that. Um, but pulling away from that, I like gaming. I like RPGs. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, that means role-playing games. Anyone watching Ooh. us is going to know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he says. Um, no, 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 no. I, that, I enjoy uh... writing, though I really don't do a lot of it anymore. Um, I do have two published poems out there that are in books. Granted, no one will have ever heard of them, but they're out there. And that's that's still one of my, like, my big accomplishments. I, I still want to get another one published just to be able to say that I did. Um knowledge and learning is big for me it's checking out the animal husbandry stuff checking out psychology i mean i've got encyclopedias i've got everything in my library from like teen romance novels all the way up to veterinary magazines to anatomy books to the encyclopedia of serial killers oh the last fancies herself a poet (laughs) (laughs) do you know what movie i'm I'm referencing there yes (laughs) You're a dick. <laughs> I don't talk when it's your time. Shush. <laughs> Sorry. I had to. Um, reading kind of goes hand in hand with that. 
and recently over the last probably four or five years photography has kind of been a big thing because i i like things that don't cost me a lot of money <laughs> because we don't have a lot of money that's my problem is i the things that i like uh cost money <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yep. like so, another thing that i forgot to mention uh uh quickly that i've been watching a lot of and i'm hoping it's going to be uh you know, uh, a part of my uh, life in the future is van life is yeah. literally getting in a van or a small RV <laughs> and traveling around. Yep. Uh, this could be my retirement, you know, something I do in retirement ages. Uh, uh, but I'm fascinated by that. Why have, you know, minimize, why have so much live on su survive on what you need, uh, go out boondocking and use a, a uh, Dutch oven and a campfire to cook your food. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm very fascinated by all that. And I, I really would love uh, in the future uh, to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big outdoor guy. So like the whole camping thing and mm -hmm. cooking out and just living on a whim, that kind of interests me as well. So um, <clears throat> that's so, because you have to stay busy. I do have to stay busy. <clears throat> and in the house, there are so many amenities that you don't have to do a lot. No. To deal with it. Whereas if we're camping, we're not having a fire unless you get that firewood done. Right. We're not having dinner unless you catch dinner and set it up. So you have to constantly be doing something. Right. Which works really well for your headspace because you can't get into a negative headspace if you're always if I'm on busy. the move. Yeah, no, definitely not. Like if I'm You know what's interesting hand... is I've watched so many of these van life videos. I think that I could uh build a fire uh with uh I mean I'm not saying I could rub sticks together, but I'm I'm saying yeah, I'd still need a lighter or a match. But uh, I would know how to build, you know, take <sighs> wood from a tree and and chop it up so it's the right in the right and use pine cones and yep. dead grass and things you know uh to uh i learned uh, set up a fire i learned that and you can find these at walmart too uh by the way but they make these really cool things they're uh magnesium strikers uh, i don't know if you've seen those they're little blocks of magnesium and if you know anything about magnesium when it ignites it gets super super hot and will burn through steel um so what you do is you shave it off on top of your pile of um the, the starter starter stuff there mm -hmm. the little uh kindling and um whatnot and you strike it and when it ignites it actually lights the rest of the fire up so mm -hmm. um that's yeah, really i've seen cool that i've seen that You've it's seen pretty those? good my favorite yeah. was we used to carry little magnifying glasses when we'd go out the power lines as kids and we'd collect up a bunch of dry grass and stuff and just use sunlight and <laughs> find that one specific point with the magnifying glass where the fire would start. And for years in my focus. backpack, I actually kept the glass from a magnifying glass so that when my friends were like, well, we got nothing to start this with. Oh, no, you don't. I do. <laughs> Let me dig into the bag of pseudo space. Right. Um, so I guess for me, uh, I've got several things. A lot of people already know about me that I like to do for enjoyment. Um, you know, obviously we've already talked about my music tastes and, and interests there. Um, movies and TV sometimes, not a whole lot. If I'm watching movies, generally it's like stand-up comedy. Uh, that's something I really enjoy doing. I like board games. I don't play them much. Uh, I don't really um, have board games that... I have expensive and niche board games. I don't have, like, Monopoly and stuff like that. I have, like... My board games that I play cost me, like, $100 a few years ago. Um, you know, it's uh, it, expensive when you get into that side of tabletop gaming, but... Uh, I do a little bit of tabletop gaming. Um, I enjoy some of them, just not all of them. Some of the ones you some have are, are very so difficult. In, they're so involved. Like, yeah. What the hell is it? Zom Zombicide, yes. Zombicide. He bought that game, and I was so excited to play. 
and he played it once or twice by himself to get the hang of it, and then brought me into it. And from roll one, this is the only board game I've ever seen that, that we can boast is out to kill you from the first round. Yep. Like, there is it's a, no It's relief. a hard game, but it's a, you know, some of the board <clears throat> games that I have are, are like that. But that's a, a thing that interests me, too, that I like to do in my time off also. Something else that a lot of people know about me that I like to do in my, my downtime is fishing. That's freshwater fishing for me is, is a big thing come spring, summer, and fall. Um, I go out as often as I can. Um, I just enjoy it. It's like relaxing. Not like relaxing. It, it really is relaxing just being out on the water um, with nothing but like time and and nature around me something i can enjoy looking at and i'm not so stressed out because i'm thinking about you know oh i i didn't do this or i didn't do that and i've still got to do this or i still got to do that um it gives me time to kind of process life and you know de-stress for a little while so that's why i, I like to fish and like i said music i do you know listen to music everywhere i go so i always have something playing in my ears when i'm out on the boat so, uh, what else do I like for fun? Um, I, I honestly, I don't do much, um, other than that kind of stuff. It's, it's weird for me. Like every day I'm doing something different or I'm trying to do something different. Uh, so I'm never finding myself, I'm trying to not find myself doing the same things over and over again, you know, days in a row. Um, oh, I get that, you know, cause I've, I've been in one of those funks, you know, where you do the same thing each and every day. Like I go to bed last night and I'm like, all right, you know, time to go to bed and we're going to start the day tomorrow over and do the exact same thing like we did today. And it's been, an oh, you have your routines, you have your routines, you have your schedules. Well, you know, I have, routines, I have that I in my change. life. What's that? I said, but I have bad routines, and that's what I need to change. So I understand. I used to have a routine where uh, I'd wake up, and first thing I did was make a white Russian. <clears throat> you know, because I was hungover as hell from the night before. Hair of the dog. And so the hair of the dog. As soon as you, uh, uh, so you want to balance that out, you have another drink. Yep. Or um, Pedialyte. What's that? Or Pedialyte or Gatorade. Uh, like that was, I needed Gatorade. to have a drink. I needed to have that, you know, my body yeah. bouncing that out. And for me, then I'd get a, it would be uh Gatorade and Taco Bell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> You'll blow the mud right out of you. Where else are you going to get an enema for a dollar? <laughs> oh man. That's my next <laughs> doctor's office right there. Taco Bell. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, there, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of things we've talked about already are, are, are part of our lives, the vaping music movies. Um, you know, a, you know, I, I see, you know, are animals a hobby. No animals for me are a part of my life. Right. And I don't, I, you know, I don't get an animal as a hobby. I get an animal because an animal needs a home and an animal will provide you with love and, uh, you know, a personality and, you know, a subject of uh, both uh, laughter and uh, at times you'll get insanely pissed off at that animal mm -hmm. uh, you know, because he but did something. They're comforting, or the, though. They're very comforting. Yes. You know, their company I got this gigantic cat next to me right now laying on his back. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, He's daring not a to pet the tum-tum. Oh. Oh, I do that to him all the time. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been with my dog for 16 years now. And, uh, yeah, I've definitely had a handful of times that I've actually been pissed off with him. But, uh, you know, we love them. But and... we love them. You can't stay mad at them. No. You, you know. Because no. then he just looks up at you with those eyes like, I'm innocent. I didn't do shit. Yeah. Maybe it was you. You didn't do shit. It's right there on the cut on the floor. What do you mean you didn't do shit? Exactly. Uh, but I used to have a thing with Chewy. Where uh, I'd walk in and Chewy did something. He he uh, he. Most of the time it was he stole the cat food. Mm. 
and I would point at the catfish, and I didn't have to say a word. I just point at the catfish, and he'd get these sad eyes, put his head down, and you know, Go ahead and, and I'd be like, Chewy, I'd point at the catfish, and he'd just put his head down and slowly try to walk away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a walk of shame. But right you, there. You, Dog Look, a dog's an smell is 48 times greater than a human's. I mean, imagine that. <laughs> right. Oh. Our, our dog is a dick. Chris can't stay mad at him. I can. Because he gets mad at me back. Like, if he does something and I reprimand him and send him to bed, within the next 10 minutes, you will almost always hear the sound of urinating. And he will walk over next to whatever shoes I had on that morning, <laughs> whatever smells freshest, and he will leave a pile of pee inches from my shoes. Not on them, but just close enough. So when she steps and when next I, to her shoes. <laughs> when I yell at him and I go, Rico, the look he gives me over his shoulder is absolutely that of a senior dog that gives None of the fucks. He's like, nope, you yelled at me. It pissed me off. This is what you get. Hmm. Yeah. He's well. But uh, before, as the show's, I think we, we're starting to wind down on time here. Um, um, we're at one hour, 35 minutes right now. Okay. Uh, I remember another subject we uh, wanted to uh, tackle <laughs> was bucket list. Yes. Yes, I want to hit some. What uh, would you say your top three bucket list things are? All right, it's stuck in my head. I can't stop thinking about it. I've been thinking about this since we brought it up, since I mentioned it to you earlier before the podcast. And it's been stuck in my head since. And I don't know if I'd actually go through with it. Uh, and it's very cliche. It's something a lot of people say, uh, but skydiving, maybe, maybe, if I could get myself... I would love to go skydiving. I'm too big. I am terrified of heights. I can't get up off a stepladder. Um, so I, I don't know if that's a thing that I would... I would love to be able to get over my fear of heights to experience that one time. Um, hopefully it wouldn't be my last day on this earth. But... That just reminded me of something... Uh... Uh, I used to make a joke uh, that we should ha and at uh, this wrestling company I work for. I go, can we have a midget ladder match and call it a, a step ladder match? <laughs> <laughs> yes, do it. Two little midgets trying to get a try to get a uh, put a step ladder out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> climb think... the step ladder. <laughs> yeah, I do. I uh, and look, anyone that's listening, going, they're called little people. Wait a second, I know. Uh, little people, the word midget makes them money. All right? right, they make money off being a midget. Okay, so uh, a, a wrestler I know, uh, he's opening the opening of his theme music starts. It's midget time, <laughs> and he comes out. So Is that Dink and say what you want, <laughs> say what you want. Uh, and do you think it's and it's not the same as calling them the N word? It's not. No, we were okay. this last night. <laughs> yeah, what well, we talked about last night on Discord. Because you uh, say the word midget, if you, it, you won't say the N-word. <laughs> unless it's a black midget. Then yeah, he'll say yeah, it. Yeah. So, but no, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> or what direction is this going in? No, what I'm saying is you want to test that theory out. One day, go find a random midget, which is kind of hard to do, but you will find one eventually. Right. Uh, and call him a midget, see what happens. Then the next day, go find a random black guy, which is much easier, um, and call him the N-word. Turns out there's a huge difference on what's going to happen to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, one might get you kicked in the shin. The other would get the whole living crap beat out of you. Or, or a hole. <laughs> or uh, they'll empty a clip in the back of your head, depending on what part of town you're in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but um... I digress. Number two. What would number two be? Um, just, it's probably... Deep sea fishing. To be able to go travel. 
um, around the world, not just here in the States. Uh, I would love to go see other places in the world. Uh, right now, that's not possible because of extenuating circumstances, but when that day comes that I'm able to, I would like to go traveling again. Uh, and number three would be to meet all of the musicians that have changed my life as far as music is concerned. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I can get down with that. You know. Yeah. Um, what about uh, what about Pixie? What is what's on her top three of her bucket list? I'm gonna go last. <clears throat> I would love to have my own equine facility. Um, a lot of people run what they call retirement barns. So when your yeah. horses get up there in age and you still want to take care of them, but the pl most of these retirement facilities tend to be more country-ish where things are a little cheaper. So like board around here where we live is 600 to 1200 a month. Retirement farms mm. are usually only like three to 400 because your horse has minimal, minimal needs. You know, they're out, they're hanging with their friends, you're good to go. I would love to open either a retirement facility or a medical facility. So if your horse has an injury and you can't take the time every day to, for the care they need, you can send them to me short term. I'll make sure that the bandages get changed, that the vets get the hands, that the help that they need, that <clears throat> kind of... Kind of like hospice care, but not end-of-life hospice care. Um, like a rehab center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two would be to own my own horse again. Um, preferably starting from a young age, because I've, I've had that experience with so many other people's horses. And then they hit the age of riding, and they go off to the trainers, and I don't ever see them again. Or when I do, I see them, and they're 15. You know, I want to be part of that from start to finish. You gotcha. And I don't really have a third one. A lot of the stuff on my bucket list kind of pops up as I'm getting ready to do it. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, this this goes on the bucket list. This what counts. about a cross-country road trip? That wouldn't be something that you'd want to do? No? Absolutely not. No? <clears throat> I have driven to Florida. I have driven to Tennessee. I've driven to Canada. Road trips are not my thing. You wouldn't go on a road trip if you had the opportunity? Depends on who my co-pilot is. Me! No. <laughs> <laughs> that you're, was a quick answer. You're a bad Absolutely not. I, I have to, at least in this house, I can go in another room. Uh, but if we're stuck in a car or an RV or something together, mm, I'm going to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. The job, the job of co-pilot is a very specified job. You run the radio, you do snacks, you do... There's whoa, a whoa, 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 whoa. What is this running the radio crap for the co-pilot? No, 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 the driver runs the radio. No, not in this relationship. If he's in a car with me, I'm not allowed to touch my own radio. That is his job. This may that or may not be him. accurate. Just, uh... <laughs> I'm just telling you, I look, I, I, I'm the one driving. I'm the one that has to be in the rhythm. I'm the one that has to, you know, I'm listening. I'm not listening to something I hate. It's one thing if you're your co-pilot, you know, you're uh, who's riding shotgun is, uh, you know, turns the radio on or you turn the radio on and they go, hey, can we listen to this or we can listen to that and something you like too? Okay, cool. I can get down with that. But. If I'm, you know, I dealt with this with the road trips with guys. I, I had a guy listen, listen to opera. Oh. While, 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 and I'm like, how the hell do you listen to opera in the car? Oh, I couldn't do it. And I literally I almost threw him out of the car at one point. He was one of my best friends. Um, by the end of the trip, I, I don't think I called him for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> all... I just had a damn opera playing in my head over and over again for two weeks. He has this um, habit of listening to lots of angry metal and then gets really mad when he looks down and I've got the speedometer pinned at like 85. <laughs> it's like, what do you, what do you want from me? 
What do you, if you're playing this kind of music, this kind of music is for driving fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, so you would have your own equestrian center. You would have your own pony. And you just don't know about the third one? No. Nothing? No. Okay. Well, she's got two on her bucket list. She's easy. How about you, Matt? Hey. <laughs> Well, hey, whoa. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Usually I'm the one that, you know, with the with the, the imagination, let's put it that way, uh, to, uh, I, I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> I think you mean lack of so, <laughs> But anyway, uh, I've already mentioned this early, earlier, but van life, yeah. you know, or, you know, small RV life or whatever, um, that's definitely on the bucket list. Like I said, that could be my retirement years. Right. If I if I'm if I live long enough. Because the yeah. way things are going, we're gonna retire when we're seventy five. So um Yeah, van life for sure. Um there are some things that are on my bucket list that I don't necessarily think I'm ever gonna be able to do. Right. But it's possible. <clears throat> it is possible. Okay. And and one of those is uh, shed time on with Willie Nelson on his bus. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, <clears throat> I I wasn't even thinking along shed time lines. Ooh. Oh yeah, shed time with Willie Nelson on his bus. Now, if Willie doesn't make it by the time, uh, you know, because he's an old dude, <laughs> you know. But I mean, the perfect panel for me would be uh, uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Willie Nelson. Snoop Dogg and Tommy Chong on a <laughs> on Willie's bus. Oh. That would be an absolute dream bucket Did you list. Ever thing. see that show on YouTube? Getting Doug with High. Mm-mm. It's Doug Benson, the stand-up comedian. He does this show on YouTube where he brings guests on, and they just sit around smoking. That's all they do is they smoke and they smoke. He had Tommy Chong and Cheech on. He's had uh, Seth Rogen on. He's had all of these people come on, and they're just they're just roasting it. It's just hilarious. You know, like like things. another another thing on my bucket list. This obviously this could happen, but I very much doubt it because I enjoy my freedom. Uh, power bombing Bloomberg, power bombing Cuomo. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, that's uh, there's the we're, we're real we're really tongue in cheek about that. Um, I joke about it often, but. Clearly, I would get shot before I, uh, I ever got close. I even got close enough to one of them. You know? <laughs> he would, he um, would just look at you and say, "Do I deserve a power bomb?" Well, technically, uh, yes, but so what? But so what? <laughs> um, no, so I mean, obviously, that's that's just stuff. Uh, a lot of that's just fantasy. It's fun and games, very tongue in cheek. Right. But uh, if the opportunity came. <laughs> the um, but okay, so like I said, van life, uh, Willie's bus, um, and the, uh, then also, uh, I would like to, um, commentate at a, a major wrestling event. Mm, okay. I don't think that's going to ever be possible just because of the, the political you know, this that goes beyond that. I mean, to commentate a match at WrestleMania to uh, uh, even just a, like a Monday Night Raw or a, a, one of their, like a Royal Rumble, that would be, that would mm-hmm. that would probably be the funnest. The problem is, um, and this is why it uh, it's kind of more of a dream than a bucket list thing, is I would get thrown out after five minutes. They'd be like, what did he say? You know, it's like I would not, they could not control me. I would just say things so off the cuff. Right. Um, and I mean, I'd watch my language. You know, I wouldn't be, I know I'm on a major pay per view. I can't sit there and say, you know, the F word and, you know, call somebody gay or whatever. You know, I couldn't right, do any right. of those things. But, uh, PC, you know? but, uh, I would, I, I do have a bit of a, uh, I do have a stand up comedy background. So <laughs> I could make it, uh, and with my knowledge of wrestling, I could make it pretty, pretty fun, <laughs> um, you know, but as far as a realistic, uh, you know, uh, van life is very realistic. Um, Willie's bus 
is maybe not, but it, it, it could happen. That's something that if I really look for it, if I really went out and searched for it and tried to, you know, uh, I think it's a possibility. Uh, at least I'd like to think it is. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I would like to uh, be able to drive uh, every car that was on my favorite TV shows growing up. Ooh, that's a good one. To you have know, too. the General Lee kit. Yep. Um, B BA's van from the A Team. The DeLorean. You know, the DeLorean. Yes. Absolutely. Um, you know, that would be a lot of fun. Ooh, that the would be a lot day of fun. Monte Carlo. I would love yeah. to drive that car. You know, so that's a that's a realistic goal yeah. on a bucket list. You could do that. Mm -hmm. I, have, um, um, I have another one that I would add to my list as well. And uh, I didn't think about this one beforehand. Obviously, uh, you, Matt, and Pixie, you guys know. And a lot of people out there listening, they know as well. Uh, I like, no, I love the guitar as an instrument. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I know how to play it well? No. I would love, and again, this is kind of unrealistic. This would probably never, ever happen. I would never get this opportunity. Uh, but I would love to get guitar lessons from Michelangelo Badio. Yeah, that's that's a... Oh, how could I put it? It's it's more of a dream than yeah. a bucket list thing because yeah. it, it it's probably not going to happen. Right. But much like Willie's bus... You never know. You there never are probabilities. Know. Yeah, I never you thought know, I was going to get the opportunity to meet Vinnie Paul before he passed away. I got that opportunity. Yeah. You never know. No, I've met I've met people that I never thought I'd meet in my life, and I was like, wow, they're actually pretty good dudes. Yeah. You know. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, bucket list. Um, I also have to like say this. I yeah I have things on the back of my mind that you could technically put on the bucket list, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't really look at it that way. I'm not saying like okay I have to do this before I kick the bucket you know right because um, you could die tomorrow right you know you could die in a week you can be you in an accident a plane could crash into your house right you know you could be involved in a fire your heart could go there's all kinds of you know tomorrow's not promised dude that's a big fear for me is is heart attack or a stroke those are two yeah i know i'm in the same me. boat right now brother it's one of the uh, one of the many reasons why i'm trying to get my health back yeah that's scary shit my grandmother died of a stroke uh it was not not easy to deal with so that did you ever see the movie the bucket list with jack nicholson uh, and uh morgan uh, freeman i saw part of it i didn't see the whole thing no <laughs> the movie's hilarious i'm gonna have to watch the rest of it the movie's so it's, funny it's, Holy crap, is she still alive? <clears throat> yes. That's what I was going to say when he was talking about Willie Nelson. I was going to pipe in with, side note, Willie Nelson is the male version of Betty White. He's just never going to die. Okay, okay, she Betty White can be on the bus, too. And still ticking. Still on TV. <laughs> Betty White can be there. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Nelson. Part of the round table. <laughs> right? Exactly. They are like iconic faces like when they go the whole nation is going to mourn but she is 99 years old still active on tv still acting still doing commercials and willie nelson is still out touring i mean he's not doing major massive tours like he did in his younger days but i mean for 87 well, years old the guy still goes out and and makes he kinda... music and helps the next generation of musicians like mm -hmm. He's still but he also kind of got forced into it too because in the mid '90s, <clears throat> uh, or early '90s, he had to auction his house off to pay the IRS. Holy shit! <laughs> he lost everything. Uh, yeah, see, he thought he owed Texas because he'd throw a big party in Texas over year over the years. I'm like, no, well, you owe taxes, not Texas. Uh -huh. Taxes, not Texas. <laughs> Holy but, crap! But uh, that's um, a, that's an that's an old Sam Kinison joke. Um, Sam Kinison was great. Oh yeah. Um, but he was always so, a screamer. He was a yeller. Well, yeah. He, oh yeah. I mean, the way he came up with that was, uh, you know, he he got into a huge fight with his wife at the time, 
and he went uh, to do stand-up, and he saw this guy guy in the front row, and he walked up to him. He goes, "Hey, uh, are you married?" He's like, "No. Are you thinking about getting married?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Okay. I want you to remember this face." Oh! Oh! And he just started screaming in the guy's face, and that's <laughs> how it was born. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, but yeah, no, like, just oh. Man, we're going off track again. I'm thinking about comedians now and stand-up comedy, and we don't we don't have the kind of time that would require. Or maybe we should do that on our next our next podcast. Talk about stand-up comedy. Absolutely. Uh, also, uh, Matt, I do believe, if uh, I'm not mistaken, we've got a couple more episodes, and we've got some surprises coming up for the uh, the listeners. Uh huh. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And I'm really stoked about this too. Hell yeah. Uh, I guess you guys out there will have to continue tuning in each week and find out what the next big surprise is going to be. Um, but that is about where we have it today. Uh, thank you guys all for so much for listening in, for tuning in, and uh, checking out the podcast. We truly, truly appreciate all of you guys for the support. And uh, yeah, Matt, what have you got going on this week? You want to do your sign-outs and... Uh, Shout outs? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, give a big shout out to the vape, uh, vape stew crew. You know, uh, great bunch of guys. You know, I've learned a lot from them. Made some very good friends. Definitely. Uh, the Cool Kids Club from Grim Green. Yeah. Another bunch of, you know, there's a lot of crossover there, but uh, um, another bunch of good people. You know, the vaping community, I've been a part of a few communities in my life. And the vaping community is, without a doubt, the closest niche community of people. Because we're, we're, so much of us are just, we're real people. It's not its not like gimmick. There's no gimmicks. I mean, yeah, there's a few gimmicks. But there's not, there's not uh, uh, you know, too many gimmicks. There's not too many phoniness. There's not too many scripts. There's just vapors and who they are. Right. Well, you know, we all have that in common, and then we find stand. out we have a lot of other things in common, too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, you could find me uh, on Instagram, TikTok. I'm really trying to build my TikTok right now. So anyone listening to this, you got TikTok, go to at Matt Sinister on TikTok. And uh, there's a uh, – it's basically the videos you will see there will cross over to my Instagram where you can see the full videos because uh, TikTok has a uh, – unless you do seven, eight parts – uh, there's a limit. There's like a, a one minute time limit on your videos. Right. Um, so, uh, and it's all open. It's all open to the public. Okay. I won't lie. So I, um, I, I did adjusting today and I did some setting up for the podcast. So I put in the links and everything in the description. I completely forgot you were on TikTok, but I put your YouTube link in there instead. That's fine. That's fine. Right. You know, because if, like I said, I am back training again. I'm I'm trying to get my health back, and you know I have a personal trainer, nutritionist. I'm currently on the the keto diet, um, and I am all about uh, documenting this to see where it goes. And uh, so right now you're going to see clips on uh, TikTok and uh, some uh, other things on. Uh, uh, the full videos on uh, uh, YouTube, or no, I'm sorry, on Instagram of each day, of each day of training, and uh, pretty soon you're going to start seeing uh, the, the how I how I cook my meals, uh, what I'm eating. Uh, eventually down the road, I'm talking about doing a keto food challenge, um, but eventually all this is going to be put together into one type of big documentary that will be on my YouTube channel. Sick. So. Uh, you know, uh, I'm probably going to start uh, soon uploading the different clips, put them, putting them more together, and put those on uh, YouTube. Okay. So, yeah, type in Matt Sinister at uh, YouTube. I do have a Twitter account, but I'm rarely on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, my Facebook is private. Um, so, uh, But I'm really trying to build that TikTok audience. So uh, if you have TikTok, look, uh, go to my channel, uh, hit the like buttons, hit the, hit the follow buttons. And you follow me, I'll follow you back. Awesome. 
Pixie, what's up with you this week? What do you got coming up? And uh, where can people find you? Same shit, different day. Easiest place to find me is Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Chaos Pixie Creations. Um, <coughs> I am finally ready. And we are opening for commissions. Price list is on the Facebook. And hopefully this weekend I'll get to some photography stuff of the stuff that I already have produced. Um, there will be a sale folder going up in the next week or so. So definitely, you know, take a look over there. Even if you don't buy anything, even just liking the page or the views yeah. on the page, well, make good. me happy. Yeah, and it's good stuff too. So, I mean, definitely guys, go over there, check that out on Facebook. Go ahead on over to TikTok, visit Matt Sinister, check out his Instagram, and uh, if you happen to, make it on your way over to YouTube and subscribe. Subscribe and wait and watch for new stuff coming out, guys. Um, big love this week. What do we got going on? Not a whole lot of much. Um, I think this week coming up, I'm actually going to do a couple of morning lives that I haven't done in a while, so that'll be coming up. Um, we're going to do some coil building this weekend. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have just a relaxing weekend, I think, this this time around, this week. Um, but you guys can find me, obviously, right here on Spotify and YouTube. You guys can find me on Instagram. You guys can find me on Facebook. And we have a group page on Facebook as well as a Discord. And uh, I encourage you all, definitely jump on over to the group page. The Discord link will be pinned in that group uh answer the questions we'll approve you get you into the community and uh get you started and uh yeah that's what i've got uh, i'm gonna go listen to some tunes after this i think but um i'm gonna go blow mud you're gonna go blow mud again <laughs> <laughs> Matt, matt's always blowing mud it's gotta be that keto <laughs> it's that keto diet boy <laughs> um but What's up? I'm going to grab a snack and probably play some Skyrim. Hey, there you go. That's a plan. That's a plan. I actually got to cook, too. I got to, uh, and yes, I will wash my hands afterwards. <laughs> um, uh, Chocolate colored pretzel? I don't have to. It's I'm eating it. It's not my cooking for anyone else. But no, I do wash my hands. I'm a very clean, Excuse sanitary me. person. Would you like a chocolate covered uh, pretzel? <laughs> <laughs> I know what movie you're referencing. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I got to go cook some some chicken and some sausage. Ooh. Uh, may throw a couple eggs in there, some bacon. Very good. This, this, this is what you get in. You know, and then I got some uh, uh, very low sugar uh, green juice that I'll be drinking with it hmm. as uh, um, I just removed the fruit. Oh, you removed all the so fruit? It, I, move, I removed what it, it's going to taste like. What the, what makes you uh, get through the green juice and enjoy it is the sugary apple. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> that is not in there. No. So, uh, yeah, right. it's uh, going to be dinner time. And it is Friday night, so I'll be enjoying some keto ice cream, which is five net carbs. The whole pint, five net carbs. So basically no sugar in the ice cream, but it's still cookie dough. Still pretty good. Awesome. Guys, that's what we've got for you this week. And we appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning in to the podcast. Thank you guys so very, very much. Again, we are doing this 100% independently. If you guys do want to show some support and help this podcast to pro progress into the future and keep getting better, uh, you guys can absolutely go ahead on over to Patreon. And uh, that will help us to keep moving forward and bring you guys even better content than, uh, than you're getting now. So, guys, big love. That's what we've got for you. We hope that you enjoyed this stream. Matt, Pixie, thank you guys so very much again for another week of a great show. It's uh, Always a, a pleasure, brother. Always a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. So, guys, until next week, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, stay the hell inside. Keep on vaping and keep fighting for your right to vape because if you don't, who will? Till next time, fam. From all of us to you guys. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.